area off to my right over here is called Bird Island. Bird Island is not actually an island, that's all floating vegetation. But that floating vegetation is such that it houses a lot of insects. Those insects, as it were, feed our ibises, egress, heron, and lipkins and whatnot. But it also feeds the little tiny fish from underneath the water. Once they get their fill, they will come out, and when they do, the birds that are living in the trees right now will come down and get their feast. The birds living in the trees right now are called anhingas and cormorants. They are like ducks in all aspects except for one. They don't shed water, and as a result, if you look in that tree about three feet off the ground, straight out my front door, you'll see a female anhinga. We know it's an anhinga because it has a straight beak on it. And we know it's a female because it has a golden tan throat. That is how they dry off. And if you look above us, or to the right, you'll see a tree that got knocked down during a hurricane. There's a bird or two on it. And as we come into this area, the area is called the Devil's Kitchen. It's called the Devil's Kitchen because those birds that live in the trees they learn how to fly the same way a robin does. Their mama kicks them out the nest. If they do not successfully fly, they will float. And if they float, they may be dinner for, a, for an alligator or something. More than likely just an alligator. Look at all the turtles. Now straight ahead of us, I'm going to turn sideways, but straight ahead of us, out the door right now, you see a couple of turtles on that log? I see two! I know. Isn't that really neat? Now you notice those turtles have two different colors. They're the same type of turtle. The one that looks like a little green has a coating on it of algae. That algae coating is because they live in the water. Now the more they come in and out of the water, the more they lose it. In other words, I call it, what we call it here, uh, rinse and repeat. Now if those birds land in the water, that alligator right there will eat them. You don't see the alligator? No. All right, I'll give you another perspective so you can see him. Yeah, through the tree and on the left. I'm going to go around the tree. Oh, there he is. Yeah, that's what he's eating. Right there. Straight out. If it had been an alligator, it would have eaten you. Oh, it is an alligator. <laughs> Straight out the log to the right. Of I don't mind running over a lily pad. See his eyes? Look at the lily pads down there. Right at my front door. Everybody see it now? There's your answer. He has to there's an alligator in here. Now, are there any children without any tickets? <laughs> Don't get ahead of me now. If you have a ticket, I have to account for you. If you do not have a ticket, I do not have to account for you. Which means parents will have options. Not suggestions, but options. Now, I'm going to ask a question. Does anybody know how to measure the length of an alligator? No. You measure between its eyes and the tip of its snout. I saw a and they kind of seaweed. There's an alligator, son. That's what we're talking about right now. Look, you measure between the tip there? of its eyes and the tip of its snout. That distance in inches will correlate to its length in feet. 